Welcome back to Pilot to Garage. This is John here, of course. I mean, it's always just me. There's no one else here. But um, today I'm going to be working on my 2009 Ford F-150. It has the 5.4 in it, and it's starting to get the infamous tick. I also had a uh, check engine light for like advanced, advanced uh, timing, advanced too far, something or other. But anyways. I'm going to be replacing the ECT solenoids. This is what they look like. It has a little screen here and here that the oil and this, this little cylinder opens up with oil pressure. And there's the sensor. Here's the part number. If anyone needs it. Uh, and I also have valve cover gaskets. There's the part number. Here's what it's for, it's for the 5.4 and the 4.6. It has the left cover, right cover, and the grommets for underneath it. Uh, yeah, I'm changing these, hoping this fixes my issue with the advanced timing, because this is actually what controls it. If not, there's only two other things it can be. is either I have the um, phasers could be replaced, or the the roller rockers, they, they're known for going bad. So I'm hoping this fixes it. So I think today's video is gonna be a, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna take off, stop the video, take it off, show you what I took off. Um, try to keep the video as condensed as possible. Right, so I'll give you a look at the engine here real quick. That's what we're doing. So, I'm going to take this off, which there is a plug right here that just has a little, little red pulled out. So these Ford connectors have this little red thing underneath it. I'll push it back in, maybe. Yeah, so this thing pulls back toward you, which unlocks this little tab in there. You pull this off. That's the mass airflow sensor on these. Um, you gotta remove this off and then unhook it down there to take this off. That comes up out. Then on the valve covers, you gotta remove this. There's a hose right where my finger's pointing at. Um, I'm gonna unplug the coil packs. I don't think I have to remove them yet. I haven't really got in here to look. Unhook this harness, flip it up. And then just take out all the valve cover bolts. It comes off. And then right here is that sensor I showed you. So you have to unplug it here, take the valve cover off, and then there's only one bolt holding it in. You just remove that bolt, pull it out, put it in. But, all right, I'm gonna get this whole side off so I can get started here. Okay, so I was able to get the air cleaner out and I was sort of removing this harness. This harness right here. So I unplugged each one of the coils. Unplugged the sensor here. And there's a couple sensors in the front. Right now it's just like wrapped around, just out of the way. Um, this is the brake booster hose. I had to unhook it. And then there was another another hose I dropped off. This is this breather right here. It goes from here to right here and that's this weird looking here that's where you're looking for hose and to get these off this one around. so there's a little silver little button so if you pull the button back it makes that hole larger in there see the clip then you're able to wiggle it pull it up off um so right now you can see there's Tons of dirt down in here. In here. So I'm gonna get the shop vac and I'm gonna vacuum all that out. And then the next step is to take all the bolts out of the valve cover and then pull it up out past the dipstick there. Alright. Okay, so to get more room, I pulled the spark plugs out. You can see there. And there is a the bolts and they are a 
seven millimeters what I use to get them out. So I started pulling these out. These are eight millimeters. But it is filthy in here. And I've had to use the shot vac on every single one of those cylinders because they were just crud in them. So I don't know if this truck was sitting in a flood or what, but so far it hasn't been looking good. So, all right, I'm gonna keep moving and get this valve cover off. All right, so we finally got the valve cover off. I had help show up, but down here you can see I have a socket hanging off of it. There's a bolt that goes up and holds the, the dipstick in place. And as you can see the angle you have to get, I had to reach through the fender well to get to it. Um, and the back, the back corner bolt was stripped, it was rusted. So on the valve cover, so the valve cover would have sit this way. This would have been the front, this would have been the back. This corner was stripped, so we took this one and I switched this bolt and this bolt so that I'm able to tighten these all down. Let me just, if you can look, you can see the, I had to use a, I had to use the, these things to get one, to get it out. But I'd rather it be up front where I can get a hold of it to tighten it and loosen it. This is really difficult. Um, So this is the solenoid we'll be putting back in. You see there's a star bit. I just got the star bit, so. Now here's the one that's in there, this one. So I'll pull that bit out. This thing will just pop up out. I'll pop the new one in, put the bolt back in it. And then this valve cover gasket will be replaced and then put it back together. It's probably hard to see, but this is the new one with the newer style screens. This has the older style black screens. But if you look at this one, I don't know if I can get the light to hit it right. That screen is missing. It's actually ripped out. Like, I don't know if you can see, see what's left of it right there. That screen right there, you see the edge of it is curled up. And right there is curled up. So hopefully this will fix my tapping problem and We'll be good. All right, so almost two hours into it, I got the valve cover back on. So I'm going to just do everything in reverse that we've already seen and keep moving and now start working on this mess of a side over here. All right, so the driver's side, I pulled the battery out because I had to remove two of the ECM plugs and all they do is this big silver thing or gray thing, you pull it back and it pulls it off of the But to get the harness down, I had to shove the harness way down here to get the, the valve cover. It doesn't want to come out of the back because there's just enough room. So you have to come, the front has to come up, tilt down just a little bit, come out just a little bit more and then it allows the back to come off the rear rocker. Then you can pull it up out. I have an issue here. This is all rusted up. So I gotta buy a new PVC valve. I'm just gonna tape it up for the night. But this one was real, this wasn't bad at all. There was no broken pieces. I got the new sensor in. So I'm just plugging in all the coils and the power and then we're done. All right, so I must have done something right because it started back up. And all I hear now is the injectors pulsating. I don't hear any more ticks, so changing that solenoid must have fixed my oil tick problem, I hope. We'll see if it goes away, and if not, whatever. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next episode.